for life money monday now i gotta say one thing if above all all you want to do is make money then tonight is the episode you need to watch not just because your sole focus is money but we're going to be talking about money and business and how business applies to property but also how can you promote your business and get your business out there with the correct and most efficient ways to digitally market your products your services and yourself and your brand so before we get into that anybody who's watching right now let's get ourselves sharing this so let us know when you've shared it and if you guys want to share it as well on your devices don't get sharing away that is awesome and i want to know well, well first of all put hashtag live if you're watching it live and put a hashtag replay if you're watching it on the replay because we want to know what questions you're asking what interaction you have we need to know if to catch up with you because you wasn't watching it live but you need to also start tagging some people so awesome gamel let's start tagging people so the competition Here's the competition for you to get some free giveaways. And that is that you share it on your page and that, that you tag, if you're in the real life tribe, that you tag 10 people in and 10 t people out of the tribe. If you're not in the real life tribe, just tag 10 people. And then by the end of it, we will be calling out your name. And if you're still on here watching it, then you will be this week's winner. So let's see who can tag the most people. Trisha, are you tagging? Are you sharing? Are you, are you tagging as well? Yeah, absolutely. Tagging, sharing, and we've got people now doing that. So I don't know if it's coming up on your side yet. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if I can see it or not. I don't know if I can see it or not. But also give it a reaction as well. Whatever you want to do, thumbs up. I don't even know what's there these days. I think you can hug. I think you can heart. I think you can uh, give the oh my gosh face. Whatever it, whatever it is, because I'm telling you guys, you're in for a massive treat tonight. I mean, we've been av advertising it for the last week, so you know who's on here. Uh, but uh, it's not just about who's on here. It's about what we're actually going to be talking about tonight. It's what we're going to be discussing tonight. So tag some people who are going to want to know how to increase the money that they are generating, grow their business. If they're into property, this is going to be an extra bonus for them because we're going to talk in how to apply marketing and business into your property investing or even the other way around or vice versa or all angles. So we're super, super excited. So Trisha, give us, give us the lowdown on our super special guest tonight. Well, this guy, I mean, he's not afraid to say what he wants to say. That's what I definitely get for him. I mean, obviously, he's very well known in his industry, and I can't wait for him to share some of the biggest um, secrets that uh, <laughs> he's never shared before. Don't be afraid, Mark. You're in safe hands. Um, we had a really good chat just before now, but basically, Mark Fry, um, I first was aware of him by watching him on The Apprentice. And he actually became the winner of The Apprentice, and many, many skills in different areas, a natural salesman natural awesome personality and fantastic business his business is digital marketing and it has grown exponentially in a very very quick amount of time and also then i went to an event um it was last year wasn't it mark yeah yeah honestly this year is just like gone like this um so last year which was amazing and he is obviously famously known um as a business partner with himself mr lord sugar and uh, Alan and Piers were doing this hilarious argument on stage, which, which Mark <laughs> handled amazingly well. So, yeah, marketing, salesman, awesome persona, and very astute businessman. So, Mark, you, you tell us yourself, like, who are you and what, what you bring to this world? Uh, well, what an introduction. Trisha and Mark, thank you so much for having me. It's amazing to see your setup here and, um, and then the great network that you've built. Well, you've done most of my introduction for me. My name is Mark Wright, but not like the guy from The Only Way's Essex. Um, <laughs> I'm the other Mark Wright, but I'm much richer. So, you know, I'm not as handsome, but I was twice as rich, and I know which one I'd prefer. 
uh, <laughs> in life. That's all I'll say about that. Um, but yeah, as you can tell from my voice, I'm from the place on the map right to your uh, left shoulder. I think it is Australia, as you can see there on the map. Um, and I came over to the UK here in 2012. Um, and I was like most Australians just backpacking around Europe and I ran out of money and needed a, a job as, um, as as I did. I ran, had 170 pounds in my bank account, got here to the UK. I door knocked businesses for a week until I got a job in digital advertising, being a cold caller. Um, and I started working at one of the biggest advertising agencies in the UK, started working there. I really hated the way they treated their staff. I really hated the way they treated their customers. We have a saying in Australia, don't get bitter, get better. So I thought I can do it better. I went to four banks, asked them for a bank loan of 25,000 pounds, but because I'm not a nation, national citizen, they wouldn't open an account for me. Um, so I did what most people do when they're out of ideas. You go a bit crazy and I went on The Apprentice. So uh, I went to Tottenham Court Road with 75,000 other people. I applied for a role on The Apprentice for my business idea for an, a digital marketing agency. 75,000 went to 50,000, 20,000, 10,000, 1,000 down into the final 20 on series 10 of The Apprentice. I won series 10 of The Apprentice. I've since become the most successful winner of the show, the first business uh one year um, and then that's allowed me to make an income and a living through dividends to be able to invest in other businesses. I own two property companies. I own a PR company called Make More Noise in Birmingham, Climb Online in London. I also own a shampoo company called Luxurious Look as you can tell by my beautiful uh, uh, hair. But all, all in all what I would say is the opportunity to be mentored by Lord Sugar, by Grant Cardone, be uh, on stage with people like Piers Morgan uh, and some of the best speakers, um, both in property and life and business, has given me the knowledge to part on to others. And success is a recipe. Business is a recipe. If you took all my money and my properties and my uh, money away from me today, in one year I'd be back where I am today because you can't take away my knowledge. And one thing everyone should be investing in before you go out there and start a business, before you buy a property, is investing in the right way to do it. If you invest in the correct knowledge, you can never take that back. And once you've got the knowledge, you can make as much money as you want because you've got the recipe. So hopefully tonight we can unpack here through your question, Trisha and Mark and everyone else's. Um, what I know from this person here, Lord Sugar, and from everyone else I, uh, because, I learned because on the first day, Lord Sugar said to me, the best advice he ever gave me was this. He said, you do, you do business for fun and you make property for money. I'll say that again. You do business for fun and you do property to make money. And that was the first lesson he ever gave me and I've stuck to that. So hopefully we can have a good uh, hour or so, guys. Yes, awesome. what a guy. That is a, good, that is a good start, seeing as we want to talk about how to do property, not as like this little side hustle, not as this um, uh, long-term one or two properties here or there, eventually maybe I make some money or not. Uh, we, wa we actually want to talk about how do we run investing in properties as a business so if it is if that advice is from uh lord sugar himself to do property uh, to do business for fun and property to make money well surely that's got to be the best combination to run property through business because then we can have fun while we're making money <laughs> well quite right quite right listen i don't think you can do property as a side hustle i think you could do it very badly i think <laughs> I think you could do property really badly and lose a lot of money uh, in a side hustle because you would be picking up all the deals that all of the serious people have already been and passed up on. So all of the serious investors will have been, seen if they can make money, decided they can't, and then you get that deal. So that would be a way to do it as a side hustle. And, I'd, and I think that's why people have a lot of bad stories to tell about property is because they've tried to do it part time. And when you try to do anything part time, you do it poorly because you're tired, you're not giving it your full attention and you haven't got the knowledge to go into it properly. So if I was giving advice to anyone, it would be to do a property course, 
It would be to read property books, get the knowledge first, and then go and do it full time, or just don't do it if you're not going to do it properly. Mm, that's uh, super, super straight to the point, very direct advice, which I think people need to hear, but might not always be what they want to hear. Yep. Um, so just just to expand on what you're saying there because it's totally totally true like most people they say hey i want to get into property because i w either i want to quit my i mean i've heard so many different reasons but the main ones are i want to quit my job you know uh property is my last shot at making money uh, i want to make passive income uh or, or some something along those lines some people they, they're just saying you know oh, probably I mean, everyone's everyone's you know to make money you got to invest in property right you know and, and they think that you just make money and you know here's the thing i was actually in business with a, with a guy years ago and he spent 20 years in property and like you said you know when you're bitten and bobbing and you're here or there uh or maybe even not really astute and you're just parking money in deals because you don't know how else to to do it um you can still make money yeah and that's the problem because you can do it bad and still make money yeah. but the time the effort the years i think in all fairness if we calculated the time the effort and the pain that people go through if we divided all the money that is made across the hours, you probably would have been better working at McDonald's. Yeah, well, we make a lot of money in property just from other people's stupidity, um, to be quite, quite, quite honest with you. But you're right. Listen, here's the thing about property is right now in this country for rich people, the banks are paying 0.4% interest, 0.4% at best. Right now on my main two accounts, I'm getting 0%. So money in the bank is buying me nothing. So even a crap property, I'm afraid to say, is doing worse than, uh, doing better than the, uh, the banks are giving me at the moment. So that's why we're seeing a lot of novices in the property game because they realize even a property, you guys, I don't know what you think is a good return on a property, anything maybe say over six or 7%, you guys are probably getting north of 15% on, on, on deals. But, um, Right now, I know some property investors will take two, three percent because the bank's giving them zero. So it, it depends what you're in it for, what your wealth status is, why you're doing it, um, what level of deals, what size of deals. There's so many different things with property. But I, I fully agree with what you're seeing, saying it has to be if you're really wanting to make serious money and serious lasting impact, it's got to be a full time job. Absolutely. And here's the beauty of what you just said. Uh, what what do we expect to get on a on a deal? I mean, first of all, our end game, and sometimes it takes longer, uh, and sometimes it's done really quick. Is our our aim is to get infinite return? You know, is to get all the money out. But I was just like, thinking that when he said it, what kind of return are you guys infinite? Yeah, yeah. So so here's the thing: like most people would be happy, or because they're not understanding the game, um, in the bank it's this. So I'm happy with anything above that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some people are doing that. But also some people are still scared to make a move because they think their money is safe in the bank, which has already been proved that it's, it's not necessarily the case. But like we're even paying our investors sometimes uh, 10, sometimes 15, sometimes 20 percent. That's just the investor, the people who give us the money so we can buy you know as much property as we wish as much as our teams can cope with uh but which again comes back to running it as a business uh because we're never going to be short on money when we can make other people rich for doing nothing yeah. you know well i say doing nothing they're giving us their money um but they don't have to physically do anything maybe they worked a, a while to to make that money but people who have got the money doing nothing it's better to get that working for them. So, think, Mark, it's like it's disbelief in my eyes because I think all these people, especially right now, because there's a lot of controversy and people are panicking and thinking, hey, you know, with the market the way it is, and then Brexit's coming up as well, so that's going to make things even worse. That you know, like, oh, well, what's the what's the right time to invest or what's the safest time? But then you've got these people that've got money sitting in the bank, and in my opinion, you know, currency's going down, so in effect, it's costing you money to just leave it sitting there doing nothing. You know, well, I think um, this comes back to a mindset of the of, of people of success. If we just step away from the problem for a bit, every time, no matter if it's a stock, a property, a business, some 
idiot will always come up to me and decide to tell me they need to tell me why it's a bad idea that I go into this deal right now because of Brexit, because of uh, stamp duty, because of tax, because of the global financial crisis that's just happened or just going. There's always some disaster that's stopping everyone in their own mind from starting something. There's never a good or bad time to invest. There's only you do it. And the, the most wealthy people, the sharpest people I know, just go into deals. They don't overanalyze the crap out of it. They don't read books this thick and measure this and get this surveyor and this thing. They go into the deal. They buy the bloody deal. They go in there. They think this is a good deal and I'll hold it or I'll do whatever with it or I'll renovate it or whatever. Or this is a crap deal. Let's get out of it. But nine times out of 10, when you enter, you get through that, that anxiety of just committing to doing a deal, you figure out it's actually fine and you can make it work. Just people always find that little gremlin in their mind, stopping them from doing things. I shouldn't do this course. What if it doesn't work out? What if this isn't right for me? What if I don't make money? What if I buy this property and I'm the one person that has a void? I'm the one, I'm the one person that can't get a tenant ever in the UK. These are all the questions we all go through and you've just got to turn those off like a switch and do it anyway. And let me tell you, don't worry about Brexit. Don't worry about coronavirus. Don't worry about this because we can't control any of that. But I'd rather be the guy owning the deals than being in somebody else's deal. That's all I know. Mm. Yes. So, so here's, here, I love this question because I've asked this question a few people. So I'm super interested to see what you say. And that is, so based on, let's just call it 2020, Yeah. the whole situation and people say the market has changed and we've had all these things that we never experienced before, well, at least in this lifetime anyway. And uh, so I want to know, what's your feeling around deals, are, either deals are there or they're not there, you've got to look for them. What's your advice to someone who's looking to either expand their portfolio or just maybe even start into investing in property. Do they need to be like buying now and and and, and moving forward fast, or do they need to wait? Uh, I'd be moving forward very fast. Uh, I've bought more properties in the last month than I have in thirty-one years. I don't know if that what that tells you. Uh, I know that Lord Sugar, who is one of the biggest uh, commercial property landlords in the in the UK, has bought more properties than ever. Uh, all of the successful people I know are buying a lot. And the word on the street is, and listen, in the bad times when things are tough, recessions, health crises, global financial crises, rich people make more money. Have you ever noticed that? And what do they do in this time? They buy everything, failing businesses, uh, dilapidated properties, distressed and and because pe people right now are trying to get out of things, get out of deals, get out of their business, get out of their property. And do you notice who comes in? The same people every time. We'll take that off you. We'll take that off you. We'll take that off you. I've bought more businesses and properties this year than I have in all of my life. And everyone, if you turn on the news, if you turn on social media, apparently there's some crisis going on. But right now it's like it's just raining deals all over the place. Every sales for property. Right? It's unbelievable. My, I, I, I'm lucky. I've got a team. I've got a property sourcer. I have a team of people that uh, bring me stuff now because I started a business. I now have a good team around me. I have to. I can't pick the phone up to them because I, we're starting to we're starting to get too much that we can handle, and it's such a great problem to have to finish the year off now. You know, maybe there is a better time to buy and sell and hold and whatever, but there's just, I just like doing deals. I want to maximize my portfolio. I want to, mac if I see a good deal, I just take it on what it is. If it's a good deal right now, I'm not going to wait a month to see if the economy changes that. If it's a good deal now, it's a good deal. If it's a bad deal, it's a bad deal. The metrics on what a good or bad deal doesn't change. It either is or it isn't. It's nothing to do with Brexit. Mm, sure. So, guys, anybody watching this right now, if, you put, if you're watching it live, put hashtag live. If you're watching it on replay, put hashtag replay. But I want you to start tagging some people who need to hear this information. Did you hear that? This is the time to take some action and move forward. So make sure that you are tagging and let me know when you've shared it on your page as well. Because if someone who's shared and tags, if you're in the real life tribe, tags 10 people in the tribe and 10 people out. Or if you're not in the tribe, just 10 people. 
then if you're on at the end of this show, we're going to give you a shout out and then you're going to win some real life merchandise of your choice. You get to choose from our store what it is that you want. We send it to you. Oh, already said he wants the flag, so we're all good here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, what's super interesting, we talk, we, we kind of kick this off saying you got to run it as a business if you want to make any money. Um, the, the thing is, like, why would you be going into it if you didn't want to make any additional money or add? I mean, I suppose there's one other reason that you purely only just wanted to maybe set one property up to give to, you know, some kind of charity or something like that. But again, still being in different businesses, setting up a foundation that help, you know, provides education to children. I know all about doing things for charitable reasons but at the same time it's still got to make money because the like people are afraid to say oh yeah i'm going to make money in this business uh so the business is only here to help people well the more money i make the more people i can help and i'm not afraid i'm not afraid or shy to kind of say that that's the concept here we, we have a training company the more money the training company can make the more people we can go and help yeah so uh bringing that back to running property for a business and i want to know what you you got to say on this as well mark because when we first started we were actually could you say go and get educated which actually we did in the beginning yeah and we were actually told oh you know don't take on those deals don't take on those kind of deals oh no 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 no, no. you want to start with something easy first i mean i don't know what easy is <laughs> Have to start with but but like you don't want to you don't want to do that and, and down, they said that's too much too. yeah we took a while to get our first deal then we lost it then we got it back then we lost it then we got it back finally we exchanged we was like look this one deal all of this work we need to do something different here and we just went hell for leather on it and then in a few in about six weeks we got six more deals wow and, and, and so we had seven deals so so we started our property investment journey with seven deals and we had to go out and raise the money. And we were talking about marketing, so we can jump onto that in a little while as well. But we, we were marketing ourselves because we had to raise money. And we actually raised 650K of in private finance wow. in, 10, in 10 days because, because we had to. But we'd already been, you know, putting ourselves out there and explaining, hey, this is what we're doing. This is our business. And this is, you know, what we want to do. So, so we realized early on, because we made a few mistakes with some of those deals. Yeah, one of them, by the way, was a flip, you know, and we were just about to sell it. And the solicitor goes, uh, yeah, well, just before it goes through so we can exchange, we just need the sign off from the building control. So it was like, yeah, no problem, we'll go and get that. And we went to go and get it and then realized that we hadn't even informed building control that we were changing the property. Rough <laughs> conversion, and we'd knock the kit that we'd knock the outhouse through and built a kit like we changed that big time yeah so our profit it was like going to be 40k but, but here's the thing we can we still made all of those mistakes and we still made 14k from that deal Amazing. even though we made so many mistakes i mean we, we, it was finished and we had to like knock holes in it to inspect insulation we had to like drill holes so we could see the stairs and how they'd been put in it was terrible and then obviously patch it all up after so um what yeah, the house was sold the people were like excuse me we, we want to move in and we're like yeah yeah, yeah no, no problem oh yeah so what's your advice because we've said it many times but i want your angle on it mark from people who might be like let me just get this deal first or let me just see let me just make a return from this money i want to i want to get your angle on it before we kind of say what happened to us and why doing so many deals at the same time is such a good thing well if you're just going to do one thing at a time you're never going to be rich you're never going to be successful um because waiting for that train to come home uh is going to take a long time uh failing the best way you learn is through experience and a lot of your best learnings will be through failures the quickest thing the way to success is failing quickly and failing forward and that's through doing mass either bigger deals and a lot more of them and let me tell you this, when I first started doing smaller deals and now I do much bigger deals, there's no difference. There is no difference. The paperwork is literally the same. 
the amount of calls to the solicitors is the same. The amount of visits to the site is the same. So uh, all that's made changing is I'm making more money. And there's no difference going broke from a 10 million pound deal than 100 million. You're going broke anyway. So if you're going to go rich, you most well go rich in the other direction. Do you know what I'm saying? Because they can only strike me off at the bankruptcy court once. And it doesn't matter how much I take with it. I'm going to take a lot with me if I go. So I might as well go big and, and uh, or go home. And that... I learned that quite early on is when I was doing really small buy to lets, the amount of paperwork was horrendous. And I was like, this is so admin heavy and so tight. It's not worth it for 300 quid a month. Yeah. Now, oh, wow. And that's, I'm getting 112 quid and if the toaster breaks, I'm break even for the month. So I might as well go and do big, I might as well go and do big deals if I'm going to do this at all. And, and that would be my advice to, to anyways is, is anyone is once you go the knowledge, just go big and, and go frequently because it, it, it's the same as, as playing small. It really is. I've, I've tried all of that. Um, and it's again, it's just your own mindset thinking about, you know, hedging risk. But you actually become you're, you're actually a bigger risk by playing that small because there's more likely in a in a grunter that something's going to go wrong and you're going to end up, you know, I've just had five deals fall through, more deals than plumber whatever makes in their life. I've had four th through because of these EWS1 certificates for the cladding regulations of buildings over 18 metres. Don't get me started about it. But right, that's why you've got to have so many deals on the go at any one time because you can have four or five fall through from one regulation change. Um, and it's really important to be, you know, keep so much on the go. And if seven come through like they did for you guys or whatever, I mean, I've made my best decisions and my best strides forward in life and business from biting off more than I can chew. Going into deals I couldn't afford, I've always found a way. Hiring someone I couldn't afford, getting a flat I couldn't afford. Then I found a way to make live the life I've wanted to live. And it goes back to setting goals in life. You should always set them so high because you will find a way to achieve them. The worst you could try and do is start doing things that you uh, think are obtainable. Mm, sure. yeah, I love that because we always say that it's just all the people that we work with in the coaching, the training, and they're just like, oh, yeah, you know, some, some are a little bit tentative when they begin because, again, like you were saying, they don't really know how much is involved until they get going. And then it's, so it's more the anticipation, it's like the fear of that. And then when you get going, we're like, look, we've got to look at it like this way. So we went to over 100 units in a really short space of time. And the good thing about that was that worst case scenario, something drastically bad happened and 50 of those units were void. We've still got 50 cash flowing units, which means that we're not, you know, we're not even at a break even stage. At least we're in profit. Yeah. Like, that's, why that's a housing shortage in this country. And to have 50, there wouldn't be 50 short shortages of houses in this ever places void in this whole place, in the whole country. People are stressing out at the minute. Like, oh, you know, there's not enough demand and all of this. That is such crap. It's like at the moment, more than ever, you know, the lack of development that's been happening over the last five to 10 years, you know, the statistics are there. We haven't been developing because of all the problems and cautious attitudes that have been happening in England and beyond. So in that respect, it's like, yeah, like you're saying, just let's go, let's buy more, let's do it quicker, let's invest more, let's take on more. But definitely everything you're saying, I thousand percent agree yeah. with. I, are either, but you've got to do it right. You've got to get the right education and mentality to handle it. Because yeah, you could go ah, but if you've no idea what you're doing, then yeah, you are going to potentially create a mess. Yeah, and and having good people around you and good systems, good tools, and that's why it comes back to education and coaching at the start. If you've got the right tools and the right people around you, there's no amount of deals that's too many. Um, because I know I've got the right team around me and we can get seven deals come in, we can get 100 deals come in, the system works the same, it's the system. The paperwork is the paperwork. So if you're stressed from deal overload or the size overload, you just, it comes, you haven't had the right training. You need to get some coaching. Absolutely, and like what you just said is team. So <clears throat> just to put it into perspective, because I know people worry about this because we've heard it. We're, I mean, we 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 provide like what we call real education because it's not just theory based information. You know, at the, at the end of the day, we follow the principle that you know, information is not your education. Yeah, like education is not information. 
Yeah, it's a process of transformation. Like I was telling you before, you know, when I was in business, I was I figured I just got to focus on the people because the people are the business. Yeah. Yeah. And you can have the best systems in the world and softwares and all of that, but it's the people operating it that are going to make it, you know, the real deal or not. So actually by um, playing that small game, like you were saying, what I see is people are worrying about, oh, well, if I really want to maximize this property, I've got to get a planning application or maybe I've got to pay for an architect and I put a few thousand into the deal. Oh, and then the deal doesn't turn out and it falls through. So now I lost that money. Like the, 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 that's def defense, you know, like the good thing about how, because I think the most deals like in the first, let's say two and a half years, I think the most deals that we had on was about 14 at one time. And we never ran that many deals. Yeah. And we made mistakes and we had investors money that were left in some deals. Like, I mean, sometimes we left like 20, 30 K when we aim to get it all out. So if some people don't mind leaving that money in there, but we'd aim to get it out because we either had it earmarked or we we're on tight deadlines to pay them back their percentage. And if it went on longer, which some of them did, we had to pay them extra interest and all of this. Um, so actually with the other deals that we had going on and the money that we made from the other deals, we were able to like pay for all of those other mistakes or all the other shortfalls on the other deals. And that's what like we are trying to get across. And I know what you're saying here as well. It's like, if you don't have all of these deals, if you've got just one and it goes wrong, then that's, that's no good. It's like just having one girlfriend. You can't, no, that's only kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> if you need many, you need many. <laughs> <to go. laughs> that, that, that was a joke. But like, you gotta have all the, all those deals on the go because then you're not bothered. You know, like, like we sit here and we work our numbers out and like, we say, okay, this is best case scenario. This is a worst case scenario. Can we handle the worst case scenario? If so, let's do it. Yeah. You know, because like, and sometimes we work in very uh, restricted areas with regulations like Article 4 and things, getting change of use on buildings and having pl relying on planning. And actually, by taking that risk allows us to get good deals. Um, but then if it don't turn out, so we can't maximize it, then at least all the other deals are going to carry any shortfall that we get on this deal. Yeah. You know? And also don't look to make all your money on the first deal on your first job you ever do. It hasn't got to be your multi-million pound job. You, 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 everything in life, business, property, whatever, takes time. You've got to craft your, you build, you know, the team I've got today has taken me seven years to build it. You know, I've been through mortgage brokers that are dickheads and I, I, I had to fire all of them up into the one I've got now. Uh, my property source is the best one I've got today. And then I've been through three or four to get to him. And there's every single person in my team is a product of experience, trying different things, going through different deals, going through different problems. And now I've got a team that can take me into the biggest deals I want to do. So experience is so important and, and, and building up the right team about you and, and just taking a longer term view. If you're getting into anything to make money fast, to get rich quick, you're doing it for the wrong reasons and therefore you shouldn't do it. If you get into something to make money in the long term, to give yourself a career, to get to give yourself a, a better future, a better life, then you should do it. But doing anything to do it quickly is, you know, we live in this Facebook, which I know we're on, this Instagram world, where everything looks like a big pile of money, everyone's smoking hot, you can have a Lamborghini, you can have everything tomorrow and everything be perfect. And it just doesn't work like that. It, re it really doesn't. You've got to put the graft in no matter what your business is. And um, you'll get there if you, you hang in there long enough. Mm. And, I, you know, because sometimes people ask us because they'll see results like, you know, the results that we got. I mean, it happened pretty quickly. Right. You know, uh, it was the first 18 months, four and a half million we built. And then within about two and a half years, it was over eight million. And it's like. Then they've seen some people who are a part of real life tribe and the, the community. They, they've done it quicker than it, like 4 million in just over a year. It was like 14 months or something. And then people are cost off, oh, how quickly can I do it? Yeah, but how quickly is it going to work for me? Mm. And as much as maybe my ego wants to say, yeah, come on, let's do it. The reality is, and what I tell everybody, is it takes as long as it takes. Mm. But there's one thing that does make a difference. And, and it really shows, I don't, because I'm seeing it with you here, the way you speak. 
And one thing I've seen is the speed upon which people will implement or bring something to fruition is their level of resistance. Resistance is like a break and a high resistance, like this skepticism, this dipping the toe in because the resistance, their progress is slow, if any. But the people with low resistance, like you say, let, let's just go in, right, let's get into the deal. You know, and let's do as many deals as we can. Not, I mean, not stupid, not blind, not just like, you know, willy nilly, like, oh, yeah, let's just do any kind of deal that we want to do. But like, let, you know, let's, once we get in the deal, you know, there is no, like, there's no holding back, there's no resistance. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. I think also a lot of the richest people I know are the stupidest. This this sounds crazy, but it's true because they can almost just, they don't have a brain to switch off. Really, in, I, one of my best friend, he's an engineer. He's like the smartest guy I've ever met. He owns no properties. He's done, I'd say, 35 courses. He's read every book about property. But every time he, go, he finds this and the deck's off by this much and the roof might come down in seven years, and then he just talks himself out of every deal, every business, everything, because he's too smart for his own good. And there's almost like turning off your own mind for a little bit. If you've got the right tools and it feels good, go and do it. Get some deals, man. It's not that hard. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And it's just switching off your own mind. And that can be for any area of business uh, and property. But it's just going in the best way to learn after you've got that initial knowledge is through experience. You've got to get runs on the board. And that's what's terrible about the education system. And I don't have any bones about it. In, ten, in the next 10 years, I know it's not going to be me by myself. There's many people on board with this. I want to replace the education system. I don't want to fix it. It's unfixable in my eyes. I want to replace it. Because what you've just said is bang on while so many people are struggling. Because when I was at school, if someone was more intelligent than me, I was made to feel bad. But these guys now, they work for people like me and you. Yeah. yeah. I think he's frozen. Did he freeze? <laughs> well, he's pulling a great face, but he's frozen. <laughs> I look at it and I'm like, wow. Yeah, I love it because he's getting really passionate now with these um, talking about the education system because it, it is a big thing. And I think oh, he talked about I think what we talk about a lot is the fact that, you know, it's the way that people um, are taught and the way that people are led to believe that, you know, you need to have money to make money. And, um, yeah, if you're not intelligent enough or you don't have the right grades in school, you don't go to university, or if you want a really good job, you have to study really hard and be a doctor or these kind of statistics. Now, this is great and everything. And if that's something you really want to do, if you're passionate about it and it fills you and it makes you excited to get up every day, you know, a lot of people, I know people that are doing all of these kind of amazing jobs that are just, they're very inspiring jobs, but they're like, I'll be honest, I'm exhausted. I need something else. And, and they've got money. They haven't got the time to do anything with it because they're always at work. So it's like, all right, give it to me and I'll invest it for you. So it's great. So it's good for me in that respect, but it definitely is a limiter. And it's just because of the way that we were taught that this is how how you're successful, it's like my parents, they were like, oh, you want to make more money, you've got to work harder, you've got to get promoted, you've got to sell harder. And then I was like, yeah, God, if I'm the top sales and I'm winning and I'm, and I'm getting all these awards, you know, I'll get more commission and I'll get promoted again. And I was just like, I'm exhausted and I don't see my children ever because I was just going above and beyond all the time. Property, wow, I was like, bang. This is it, line them up, get the pipeline going, and then it's like domino and life change, miracle happens, not blue skies, actual real life creation in a very short amount amount of time. I think also what we're lacking in society in general, but particularly in the educational system, is financial understanding. People do not understand how money works and also People don't understand how powerful debt is. If you are scared of debt, you will never be rich. I'm going to say that again. If you are scared of debt, you're never going to be rich. Wait, wait, one, wait one second. I want you to say it one more time. <laughs> if you are scared of debt, you'll never be rich. Thank you. And people will tell anyone who listens about how dangerous credit cards are, how dangerous overdrafts are, how dangerous investor financing is. 
Well, I'm glad you say that because I'm going to take all your money. I'll, I'll, I'll take yours too. The more debt you can give me, give me, because that's the more successful I'm going to be faster. Leverage. Understanding the power of leverage, understanding the power of debt. But then you talk to the average Joe blogs on the street. They think debt is bad. They think credit cards is bad. They think having money in a bank account is good. They think having a pension is good. That is literally, I want to pull the hairs from my roots when I hear this sort of stuff because we have been taught, and listen, if you want to be a doctor, by all means, that's a fantastic profession. Go to university, study, and become a doctor. I have so much admiration for that. But if you go to a university and study arts and get a job and work all day and invest in a pension and work for somebody else, you there's a large part of that where you're just caught in the wheels of the system and uh, you're working into your grave and then you're going to be left for money that probably won't be there at the end because you're giving it to people in Canary Wharf to invest. And trust me, if you did the right courses and knew the right stuff, you could invest that way better than they do. And that's mm. called the pension. And we need more better education, understanding of money, understanding of systems. But people are blind to this because they think the system is set up so they can't fail. But it's set up so the people in the top of the system do better and you kind of just live okay and then you die. And I, that's not a good deal for me. <laughs> I feel like you've been sitting in business meetings for the last four years. Hey, what was the last thing I said before I froze? Yeah, so you were saying about the education and you want to not not even um, change the current education system, but absolutely um, was, was, that, was, that, was that the last thing I said? Yeah. Yeah, and then you went. Okay, so then I was saying at school, I was made to feel bad or unworthy or not good enough because I, you know, there was other people more academically astute than me. Um, but then I was saying, like, even in Robert Kiyosaki's words, he he says that the A student works for the C student. Yeah. Yeah. And just going back to what you guys are saying about not getting stuck in that wheel and working for people, because people are thinking, oh, yeah, but if ev everybody can't be a business owner, if everybody was a business owner, who would work for anyone? And that's another thing about, you know, like going, going out there and giving people real education. You said you've got to learn from experience, Mark. That's what you said, right? And we have a saying that because some people think, you know, experience is the best teacher. That's what they say. Yeah, the truth. This is the truth, not what I want it to be. This is the truth. Experience is the only teacher. Quite right. You can't, you, no, I can't teach anybody anything. It's the experience, like the environment we can create. So then they learn from that experience. Absolutely. That's why we like to find deals and raise money in the room. We don't send them home to go and do it because they just don't, <laughs> you know, so they just don't, they just don't do it. Yes. Yeah, so like, we'll 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 Thank you so much for the information. I'll do it one day. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's everyone, you know, everyone's looking for, I think people think that Lord Sugar sprinkled, um, got this magic billionaire dust he sprinkles on him and then he sprinkles some on you if you're lucky enough to get in the same meeting room. And I've met so many multi-billionaires and billionaires and the biggest property landlords in the UK and all of this stuff. And there's no secret dust. It, we all know the same things. You guys are teaching what these guys know, but it comes back to application. What are you going to do when you've got the notes in your notebook? Are you actually going to then go home and implement the steps or are you going to go and sit back on your hands and say that wasn't, you know, they didn't know what they were talking about or there seems like risk or Brexit or this. Just shut your mind off and do the deals and you will get there really quickly and 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 um, you'll be surprised how quickly it happens, to be honest. This this guy seems like a wise person, Richard Fay. Great comment there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. I wonder what was happening. It was like a news bulletin, like a news flash, but I didn't know. I thought this thing was broken. That's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, so look, so we're going to help people do it at this level, like people who want uh, education, people who want to do it, you know, the real deal. Yeah. And then the, the education system, I think there was a question earlier. What are you going to do? What does it say? What, uh, what's your plans for real life for the education? Yeah. I mean, the education is all what you just said. And some other people are commenting here. They don't teach the stuff that you actually need. Yeah. And to be like a central funded thing, I think is a broken system anyway, because no one that, that that's that's like a rich family just saying, hey, the rest of the family, don't you guys worry, you know, because we're just going to give you the money to do whatever you want to do with it anyway. Yeah. And then by the time, you know, they grow up, they don't know what to do with it. 
Am I making sense? But it was, the system was set up intentionally to produce the people that it is producing. We, yeah. We're purposefully hamstrung because if, the, if they produce everyone like me, that's a huge problem, and, and, and like you, Mark and, and Tricia, the best thing you can do if you've got young kids or young people that you're advising or coaching, it is to get them as much work experience as possible. Try them in different environments as quickly as possible because experience is the best and the only teacher. And the more experience you can give them, the, the smarter those young people are going to be. That's it. And this, uh, this, t this idea, which I think, you know, because bringing in real business people like you, to which I'm sure you would be open to do it, you know, either on a regular basis or just every so often to come and be with the children, talk to them, give them a little exercise and even get them doing some things that are going to help them get experience, but just in a controlled environment. So they can't Here you go, Thomas and Bradley, build a funnel and then I'll give you some points at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, build a landing page, understand how to create a, a checkout on a landing page, because that's really, you know, what is the HMRC? How do you register business? How do you open a bank account? I didn't leave with any of that information. That would have been helpful. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, I, 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 what, what fascinates me is I get invited to guest lecture at the university sometimes. And I went to the, uh, uh, the business university here and I was uh, doing a talk there about my experience and the lecturers were in there taking notes. And that was, as much as it's a credit to me, that was really worrying because if I know stuff that they don't and they're teaching, we're in big trouble because what's happening when I'm not there um, reeling off all this stuff to the kids, they're getting taught by people who've never owned a business. They've never done this stuff and that really worries me, but that's a whole other topic for another day. Yeah, because um, I think the problem is that the schools are, are, are governed by the government, the curriculums and stuff that they have to stick to, get a, a certain level of grades. And unfortunately, it's just like a, you know, a conveyor belt of pass at certain percentages per school, per, you know, district, whatever it is that you're in. And it is simply like, see you later, deal with it when you get out. It's very much like a lot of, we were talking about this today, a lot of um, training organisations some, some of it's great. Like you go to the training, you join and want to sort of expand yourself, but then you leave the three or four day programs where you're like, oh, I'm buzzing. And then you're like, yeah, just no follow up. There's no accountability, no support there to say, right, come on. Have you done your actions? What are you doing next? When are you doing this? Okay, boom. What was the result of that? How are you going to take up? You know, like you need someone to constantly be like, hey, come on. That's why yeah. a mentor is so important and also having a board in your company because accountability is the key to long-term success. Uh, it, it's so important to have someone tracking your goals saying, hey, listen, you told me you'd come back in and these would be achieved and these numbers would be hit and you're a mile off that. So actually, you know, there's repercussions. And without that, if you're holding yourself to account, well, you'll give yourself days off. Having people that keep you uh, on the money is keeps you on the money. That is like music to my ears because let's face it, there are so many people that want to go into business and do go into business, property being one of them, because they think they want to be a business owner or work for themselves. But let's face it, they do it because they don't want to be accountable to someone else, which is the worst reason to wanting to go into business yourself. We're all accountable. Let me tell you, we're either accountable to the bank, your partner, you're, everyone's got a boss, even when you think you don't have a boss. And uh, let me tell you that, it, and you want to be accountable. That's why you create boards when you are your own boss, because uh, w when you don't have anyone to speak to, that's when uh, mediocrity starts knocking. Yeah, absolutely. Accountability is absolutely key. You know, I get a lot of stick for holding people accountable. Wouldn't you say, Tricia? Some people, yeah. get, some people push back when I try and hold them accountable. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the thing is, you know, yeah, you can be surrounded by people that are like, I, I, I don't, I, I was talking to a few of our really kind of senior members the other day, and I said, Mark is like, the way I explained you, he's like an Einstein or, you know, those, you know, those unique characters that are, that are not necessarily the people that you relate to the most, that you find the most easy to immediately go, boom, I click with you, but you're a genius of your time. Like he, 
that's that's the way that he is. So it's like initially you might be like, whoa, that's a bit strong because he's so direct with his feedback. But when you get to know him, you spend a bit more time, especially when you're at a training program. Initially, you might be like, but then you're like, wow. Are you, this are you, are you speaking for yourself? Are you speaking for yourself? So what I'm saying is, right, because people are like, oh, my goodness, at first. And then they're like, this guy, one, knows his stuff, and two, really wants to help me. So that's what I mean about the people that are the biggest game changers in this kind of history in the last few centuries are like your Einsteins and your um, Churchills and your, um, oh, what, what's the book? The, oh, the name is just totally fell out of my head. I don't know if you think of it, because we've got to go into five minutes of fast questions now. So we're going to fire some questions at you, Mark. So here are some questions. So uh, I'll put them on the screen, but I'll read them out to you. So you said that you brought a lot of property in the past month. What areas are they concentrated in? They're all in Essex and Kent. Um, so the properties uh, that I've bought in the last sort of month have been in Essex and Kent. Majority is I've just got the new sign here for the ones. Look at this. South End on Sea. <laughs> All of the boards here um, now, so South London Sea, Essex, etc. So yeah, um, that's the areas I'm having the most success in right now. Awesome. And then we got this one. So, what strategy and where is the house and market going? This guy, his photos in incredible shape. Oh my god. Um, so uh, I, could, I couldn't concentrate looking at your body, young man. Um, so what's the strategy and where is the house market? Okay. Listen, I don't know what's going to happen with offices right now. And I'm if I was Lord Sugar, uh, you know, the second biggest commercial landlord in the UK right now, I'd probably be pretty stressed because looking out my window here and all the big office blocks, all the lights are already off. And this time a year ago, they were all on at this at this time. So that's telling me they're empty. Big companies have realized they don't need their the size of offices that they needed. They could do rotations. They could have meeting rooms. They could have offsites and let people rotor through working at home, meaning that we'll probably see these offices converted into residential. If I come into London where I work every day, it's dead right now. Pret's empty. Uh, all the buildings are empty. I go out to the suburbs where I live in Essex, it's packed. The high street is packed. The supermarkets are packed. So what we're going to see is the residential have to come into the cities and convert either offices into part residential or smaller offices if it's going to remain competitive. That's where I, what I see happening in the short to medium term. Yes, commercial to residential. That's what's awesome. going to happen. So before we go to the next question, Trisha, we let the, ask the team who has won this week. So guys, you've got to be sharing it on your timeline. You've got to tag 10 people in the tribe, 10 people out of the tribe. Or if you're not in the tribe, just tag 10 people and you could be up for winning some real life merchandise. Here's your next question, Mark. So he said, so, so Richard is saying, I remember you winning The Apprentice. I thought you would win. So what was your favorite task that you did? Well, I think the best thing about The Apprentice was all the different tasks. Um, it short taught you so quickly that you could do anything really quickly. You could learn a new business so fast. We'd do candles one day. We'd do something the next day. For me, we did a farm show where I sold 11 hot tubs, uh, eight of which I sold to one guy. It was my favorite task uh, that I did, and I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I can remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was so, so cool. Oh, funny enough, we actually have someone. Um, he, he actually came on board with us because he wanted to invest in property, but he started a hot tub business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, it must hey. be a good business. If you need a salesman, I'm available. <laughs> this, by the way, this kid is 19 years old. He's totally killing it. That's all. He's earning like four times more than he was uh, when he was in his job. And this is in the space of like a few months, like four or five months. He's already created his financial freedom for himself in like a few months since yep. joining real life. I love that. See? So, also, is this another question here? Or is this just, I think this might just be a comment. Good. So I, I had a question in addition. So, you know, you talk about commercial, um, especially if they've got commercial tenants in there right now, then it's going to be a tough time. So um, have you thought or are you like anybody in your circle, your mentors, the people that you're associated with? Are they looking at any deals where of like snapping up all of these commercial buildings and turning them into some kind of residential complex or something? Well, all the big commercial guys I know are snapping up all of the people who are um, 
bit uh, anxious, they're snapping up their commercial because they believe it will come back. Now, Lord Sugar and I have had very robust debates because my portfolio is in residential, his portfolio is in commercial, and we've always debated what is more powerful um, robustly and um, in a, lot, a lot of swear words in between. But I think he would be much more open now to converting. He's I've already seen it done uh, where they're converting some of those uh, smaller commercial holds into residential. Um, and uh, just to touch on one thing that, that Tricia said, which is a very unpopular thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. All the successful people I know, I'm trying to think of any of them and I can't, None of them are nice people. Uh, I, I, they're they're ruthless. They're so tough. And the best mentors and coaches I've ever had, I've never liked them so much as people, but I've learned so much for them and they've changed my life. The harder on me they've been, the more money I've made, the more successful I've become. And you don't want people that are going to tell you what you want to hear. You don't want people to walk away and say, gee, he was a nice bloke, she was a nice lady. You want to walk away and get results. And there's not enough tough love anymore. We live in this world where you can't say anything, you can't do anything, you can't tell people, otherwise they take you to the works tribunal because they are offended. Um, listen, some people need to know what you're telling them and don't apologise for telling people what they need to hear because really successful people say it how it is. Sounds like a world I want to <laughs> uh, Where was the first deal and what was it? My first deal was in South Woodford in East London. Is this my property deal? Are we talking about property? Yeah, I would suggest so. I bought a flat in South Woodford in East London. That was my first ever property deal. And I think that was, it was a small, it was a small deal. It was a small deal. It's valued at 620 now. And I, and, and, and I had and, a question. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Because seeing as you mentioned it, well, what was the first deal then, if it wasn't property? Uh, the first deal I, uh, my first deal I ever did, I tried to buy a, it fell through. I, I still talk about it as a deal. I bought a restaurant for 30 grand. And um, because it was a good deal, uh, the freehold and the restaurant in it, and uh, I bought, ended up, the deal went through and it fell through after through some legal stuff. But basically, disaster could, could have really slowed me down early on in my career because I'm not a chef, didn't know anything about running a restaurant, but the deal was good, so I bought it. Uh, and it was a restaurant in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, anyway, it didn't happen. And I always think about how lucky it was. Sometimes the best deals that ever happened are the ones that didn't work out. Next question for you. Uh, then, do you tend to purchase everything um, or do you ever rent to rent or long lease? Very good question. Um, there's this big debate uh, that I have with one of my friends about he doesn't buy where he lives, he rents where he lives and then buys where he rents. Um, so that's the first thing I want to touch on. I'm an advocate of owning everything that I have. <laughs> I own my house. I own the house that I live in. I own the houses that I rent out um, to other people um, because I much prefer me owning things than other people. But I can see the theory of if you can't afford to buy your own property, buying something and leasing it out first to get on the uh, on the ladder. Um, but, yeah, I tend to purchase everything um, that I do. So rent to rent and long lease I've never done. And uh, it's not for me because I just stick to what I know. Um, what's been my worst? Yeah, go on, Tricia. Yes, yeah, so I've got, I've got um, one sort of slash two from Instagram saying about more marketing question, I think. So how to advertise and where to advertise and are websites still a thing of the present? Okay, so shall I answer Harvey's first, what's the worst deal I've ever been in? Um, so first, I bought a website business, um, which didn't work very well, um, lost a lot of money in that deal. Um, and what I've quickly learned with any business opportunity that I've bought into, currently I own five limited company businesses, trading companies. Uh, when you invest in a business, uh, don't look so much at the business, look at the person you're investing with. Uh, if you're gonna go into business with someone, you want to know that they know their stuff. Any time that I've gone into a business and it's been successful, it's because the person I've partnered with and given the money to in the deal knows their stuff. They have a good business plan. They've got a good work ethic and you can trust them. Every time I've gone into a business that hasn't worked, it's because the managing director in place doesn't know their sector or they're untrustworthy. Sorry, Tricia, could you repeat that question one more time for me? Yeah, so they basically asked kind of two things, um, how to advertise and where to advertise 
and also our websites still a thing of the present <laughs> yeah well i think what we've just seen is websites <laughs> are probably not only the thing of the present they're the thing of the past the present and the future and if you don't believe in the power of the website i don't know if you're going to have a um you're going to have a business in 12 months because if you look at the companies like tm lewin house of phrases uh, all of these old companies that said we always done it this way. This is how it's always been done. And now they're in the bankruptcy court. That's because they didn't embrace the power of a website. They didn't empower uh, social media. They didn't understand influences. And now they they don't exist anymore. And companies who have done that well are now the companies we look to like the leaders because think of the best websites we use every day, Amazon, all of these sorts of things have, have grown more and more this year. So if that answers you, you, you have to have a website. I, I don't understand any, I don't know of one business that doesn't need a website. I cannot think of one. We asked this question before we went live or we were talking about it, the subject came up and I asked the question. I was like, tell me a business that is not an online sales and marketing company. Name one, because if there is one, or if there was one, then it's not going to be around. I'm pretty sure it's not around anymore. But that's, yeah. our, that's our duty as entrepreneurs, no matter what business we're in, regardless of the website, is to be, we're all in PR, we're all in marketing, we're all online. If, if you've got a lack of sales or a lack of deals right now, it's because no one knows you. You've got a PR problem. Mm. If, if you want to get more deals, you want to get more recognized, you need to write a book. You need to go on a podcast. You need to speak on stage. The more people who know of you and like you can buy from you. That's simple. That's that's business. Absolutely. I think that's why, you know, having real life, um, you know, on the stage at the next growth con talking about property and training events around property is just, you know, the best decision in the world because it's it's just adding so much value, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let me read this question because it's kind of not don't fit on there. So what yield you average across your portfolio how come you've chosen to invest down south when a lot of investors invest in the midlands and wales very interesting i'm glad you invest in london to, uh, That's a good question really good question and this is something we threw around a lot when we started our portfolio and it's really simple answers the first thing if something ever goes super wrong with our portfolio we're 35 minutes drive from every single one of our properties not three hours drive from a, a property. Uh, we can go in and do checks. We can go in and fix things, do maintenance. So first of all, location, because I'm located here, so it makes it easier. Now, I understand you don't need to have that uh, in property. Two, I'm very in the fortunate position where I've now got enough money to do bigger deals and I want to make more money. Where are the bigger deals? In the southeast. The bigger deals are here right now, so I'm doing bigger deals and it's easy to do bigger deals with higher yields and also the longer term growth, the, the, the capital value grows more in the southeast over time. Okay, maybe you can say it grows 100% over, I don't know, 10 years in Wales, but I'm going to be buying a property there for 200k and selling it for 400k in 10 years. 200k don't interest me. I, don't, I want millions of pounds, not hundreds of thousands of pounds. And it's easier to bet bigger deals that guarantee better returns over longer period of times in the southeast. So our experience shows us. Awesome. Good. So I have one more question to ask you that's super, super important. Yes. Uh, but before I do, let's announce this week's winner. So the person who fit the criteria, let's see if you're still on it, which I think you may be, but it's Gurmel. So Gurmel, just comment. If you comment right now uh, before we leave, then you are the winner of this week's Real Life Merchandise Prize. <laughs> so here's a very here's a very Important question. Yeah, because a few people, they've already left because our mastermind, we have a mastermind for our community that started at eight o'clock. Uh, but this question is super important. So um, we, we never, ever, ever want anybody to forget this one thing, Mark, and that is that they need to do the right thing for the right reason. Now, why is that? Why do I do what I want to do? No, so, so we always say, we say everybody, like everybody's always, you got to, if you want to win in life, you got to do the right thing for the right reason. Why is that? Because if you start out just wanting money, just chasing money, you will never achieve it. You, you will never get there. If you just want money, you won't get there. You have to set out for a greater good, a greater purpose. And that can be to build something, that can be to leave something. That can be to help someone. 
But if you set out to do something that you enjoy doing and that you're good at and you you set out for a purpose bigger than your own, you will then make money. And then at that point, you'll realize that money wasn't the reason why you started in the first place or that important at all. And uh, it's a pretty powerful lesson because I can see one lady in the questions here. That I wanted to say she said ruthless people are not progressing to other dimensions. They're only living in this one and their goal is their money, blah, 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 blah. Being ruthless has nothing to do with anything about living in this dimension or whatever. That's a key to being successful, being tough and giving people tough love. Money is not important. And also being tough means doesn't mean you cannot be spiritual. I'm very spiritual. I meditate. I've done three sessions of ayahuasca. Uh, I've done, done it all. Let me tell you, I've trekked up mountains and done all of that stuff. That doesn't mean I can't run my business and be tough. And that, that certainly doesn't mean I'm only living in this dimension. That means whenever I'm giving something my attention, it means I give it 100% of what I am to be successful right then. That can be my health, my fitness, my business, my properties. I give everything 100%. And I would argue that being ruthless about my success in all areas of my life gives me more spirituality across all dimensions. Exactly. And that's what this channel is all about. People get hooked from the money and business and property. But at the end of the day, if we're not fulfilled, if we're not connecting with everything that there is, then that fulfillment is never, it's never, it's not, it's not really success. So that is awesome. And I'm, I'm glad you, you know, you talked about that. And uh, yeah, Liliana is uh, very much in touch with that. I think she's just sharing her, her view, but that's good. So thank you. So that's awesome. And I love to ask that question about doing the right thing for the right reason, because I like to get all these different perspectives. Uh, but we have a saying, and I like to hear it from you as well, Mark, um, just so we got it here. Because what we say is we say, you've got to do the right thing for the right reason, because it's the only way that you're going to discover your true potential. 100%. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on here. It's been so entertaining. I think we had a massive value. You have been here, shared awesome expertise and insight. Give it people on the chin, which is, uh, like you say, not always what they want to hear, but it is what they need to hear. So thank you so much. And thank you, everybody who's been watching. And we'll see you all next time.